Hello and welcome to your recipe for financial success with me, Emma, and my colleagues, Becky and Julie. In each episode, we'll be bringing you a list of ingredients to help you cook up a storm and master methods to finesse your finances. We'll be helping you expand your repertoire and hopefully teach you a few new skills along the way. So, clear the counters and get your mixing bowls ready for today's recipe. Let's get started. So guys, what have you been up to this week? Well, don't know about you, but I'm chilling out on the new bean bags. They are so comfortable. I love them. Especially after a glass of Prosecco. Are you sure I'm not slurring my words, Becky? No, I'm not sure that you're not, in all honesty. <laughs> Oops. I think we've made one mistake, though. What's that? There's only two bean bags. Yeah, that's a bit awkward, isn't it? I thought you could sit on the floor, Emma. Well, what are you two going to do when I've got my feet up on the second one? Well, that means we need six bean bags and not three. That is very true. <laughs> so, what are we talking about this week then? So, in this week's episode, we are icing our ices. Ooh. Ooh. So, Emma, give us some stats about ices. Let's get us started. In 2017 to 2018, there were 10 million people in the UK that had an ISA. And that's actually gone up the following year, so 11 million people had them. That's quite a high percentage of the population. It is. And it's interesting that more people are starting to use them. The other thing that I found quite interesting is 2.2 million of those 11 million people have a stocks and shares ISA. That's only 3%. I thought that was quite low. What about you? That is quite low when you think 10 million people have ISAs and of that only 3% of them. When you look at it like that, you think, oh, that's that's not many at all, is it? No, that is very, very low. I, I, yeah, well, it is quite low. So, But why don't we explain to our listeners what an ISA actually is? Of course. So for those of you that don't know, ISA stands for Individual Savings Account. So it might sound obvious, but not to some, that an ISA you can ho- only have in one name. You can't have it in joint names because it is an individual savings account. There's a limit to how much you can pay into your ISA. And for the current tax year, um, it's £20,000. And, and that's into an adult's ISA. So a, but a junior ISA, you can pay £9,000 into them. There are some different ISAs that have different limits, but we're going to cover them in a little bit more detail later on. So I'm just going to leave it a little bit generic at the moment um, and, and tell you that so far. Generally, you can have an ISA from the age of 16. But again, there's some, some caveats on that later on too. So I'll tell you about that later on. So how many different types of ISAs are there, Emma? Why don't you have a guess? You tell me how many you think there are. Let me think. Because uh, there are some weird and wonderful ones. Um, off the top of my head, I'm going to say six. Oh, close. Um, I'd go for five because there is some. There is lots of different ones. I just can't remember which ones are still going and which ones aren't. I've just realised I said mm, close and Becky was actually right. Oh, well, there are well six. done, Becky. Let's get the Prosecco back out. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Should have, should have been paying attention there. <laughs> Did you have an extra glass of Prosecco too, Emma? Shh, you weren't meant to be. figure that out. But obviously uh, my counting skills have given me away. So I do apologise. So yes. Thank goodness you don't work in financial services. This is very true. Oh, oops. Yes, you do. <laughs> Awkward. So yeah, there are six different types of ISA. So do either of you know what the main two types are? I would go for... A cash one. And the other would be stocks and shares. You would be right. So those are the two most common types of ISA. So I'm going to start off by telling you about cash. Nice little high five over there. Thank you very much. (laughs) So um, the cash ISA, you can have them from the age of 16. And try think of a a cash ISA as a normal savings account. Um, The only difference being really is that you're not going to be taxed on any of the interest that you earn. So you can normally get a cash ISA with a bank or a building society um, and they're they're pretty secure. Obviously, you've got your financial services compensation scheme that we've talked about before um, and you're given a set rate of interest um, that that you know you're going to be getting from those. But bear in mind, the interest rates, particularly on instant ISAs or any instant access bank account at the moment, are quite low. So rates are from at the moment around about 0.01 percent 
Ouch, that is really low. Yeah, think of a, a penny for every £100 you've got. How do you feel about that? Not that excited about that. <laughs> no. So that's why um, often people look for alternatives where they may be able to make a little bit more money. Um, and people often choose to use a stocks and shares ISA. So this is where you can invest in different funds or shares. And these are the funds and shares are something we're going to talk about in a future episode. So I'm not going to go into it again, too much detail about those, but we are going to cover them. So if you're 16 for a cash ISA, how old do you think you are for a stocks and shares ISA? Oh, I know this one. It's 18. <laughs> yes, it is. So it's 18 that you can have a stocks and shares ISA from. And these should be viewed as a medium to long term investment. So if you're thinking you might need your money out short term and might need to get hold of it soon, I wouldn't suggest putting your money into the stocks and shares ISA. A cash ISA is going to be better if you need it short term. But if you're looking for something longer term and you're prepared that it may rise and fall in value over time, a stocks and shares ISA could be a good option to look at. Oh, OK. So they're the main two options. There's a four more that you want to tell us about, Emma? There are. So these are where they start getting a little bit more weird and wonderful that some people might not have ever heard of. So the next one I'm going to talk to you about is a lifetime ISA. Oh, I think I heard about these and I was too old to get one. Oh, you're giving away your age to people there now, Julie. Ooh, ouch. To have a lifetime ISA, you need to be between the age of 18 and 39. That knocks me out. So anyone can have a guess at how old Julie is from that. Be kind, all I'm going to say. Um, I'm 17. <laughs> <laughs> of course. And the maximum you can put into these ISAs each year is £4,000. So only part of your 20, overall £20,000 allowance. What happens is the government add a 25% bonus at the end of each tax year. Basically, for you to use this money, it has to be towards um, buying either your first home or for your retirement. So the government will continue to pay that bonus up until you reach the age of 50. Um, and you can then take the um, savings from this ISA at the age of 60. Or if you're specifically using it to buy your first property, obviously you can take it out sooner. So there, there is that nice bonus from the government that you can take advantage of um, by using a lifetime ISA. You can see why I wanted one. Yeah, I can, definitely. And I can see why lots of people would. Who doesn't like a bonus from the government? What's the catch? Well, the catch is that you can only use it for a first home or for your retirement. You can't just take it out in between for anything else you fancy. So you can't go on holiday with it, Becky. Yeah, so if I wanted to take it out, there wouldn't be any penalties. Ah, uh, yeah, there actually would. <laughs> well, I never did. <laughs> All right, Becky, you caught me out there. You're getting too far ahead of me. If you want to access your money, you can, but that holiday is going to end up being a lot more expensive because there's a penalty that applies of 25%, which is your bonus from the government. So they take it back away from you. Yes, they do. So if you access it for any other reason, you're going to lose that penalty, which would defeat the point of having the ISA in the first place. There is a bonus, though, that the government are giving you up until April 2021. So for a short period of time, um, from May this year, they've been reducing that penalty for tw to 20%, obviously, because they've understood that some people may need to access their money um, during the pandemic. So that's been taken into account. Excellent. No, that sounds a pretty good option, to be fair. Pretty good indeed. So what's the next one on your list, Emma? So this one's a bit of a, a trick one, really. I'm going to tell you about it. But with the caveat, you can't actually go get one if you haven't already got one. Just dangle the carrot in front of us, but we can't actually ever get it. Indeed. <laughs> Is it because I'm too old or they just aren't available anymore? No, you're not too old for this one. They're just not available anymore. So I'm going to be a bit, bit smarmy here. I have one of these. so um, Show off. <laughs> yes I am so um, this one is the help to buy ISA and um, like I said they're no longer available um, but what they were designed for is for you to be able to buy your first home and um, you could put a maximum um, sum in to start with of £1,200 and then £200 a month regular savings can go into a help to buy ISA and then the government again when you choose to buy your house at that point will add a 25% bonus to the savings that you have up to a maximum of £3,000. Um, again, I'm not going to go into too much detail, especially as you can't actually uh, apply for one now. Um, but depending on where in the country you live depends on um, the, the value of the home that you can buy and different things as well. That one sounds a lot more complicated, to be fair. 
it is a little bit, but again, if it's something you've already got, you probably took it out for a reason and hopefully you'll know a little bit about it already to, to have one in place. So, Like you do, Emma, because you have one. Yes, I do. Okay, so that's number four. What's number five? Number five is what we call an innovative finance ISA. Try say that one, Julie, after your glass of Prosecco. Let me see. Innovative finance ISA. You see, I'm not slurring my words. What do you think, Becky? Is she? Mm, I don't know. I could see the effort on her face as she said it. (laughs) (laughs) An innovative finance ISA um, invests in what we call peer-to-peer lending instead of cash or funds. You're going to have to tell us what peer-to-peer lending is. In Uh fact, it sounds like it could be a good topic for another podcast another day. Indeed. But I'll tell you a little bit just so you have an idea of, of what it is. Um, Peer-to-peer lending is where lenders and borrowers are matched together basically using a website. So rather than um, someone going to the bank because they need to borrow some money, you can um, do it kind of through a third-party website and it matches people together. So basically using um, peer-to-peer lending um, cuts out the middleman so can make the rates better. The difference being, as I mentioned earlier, about the financial services compensation scheme with ISAs and cash ISAs, being in banks and building societies, an innovative finance ISA isn't protected by this. So that's just something to be aware of, that obviously there is that little bit less security with that. Emma, can I ask you a question? You can indeed. So if I had £20,000 yeah. and I had 10000 in my stocks and shares ISA yeah. and 5000 in my cash ISA, yeah. could I also have £5,000 in an innovative finance ISA as well? Is that correct? Have I, have I got that correct? Yes, you can. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Any other questions on that one? No, not at the minute. Okie dokie. So the sixth and last type of ISA, Emma? So the last type of ISA is what we call a junior ISA, or you may have heard of them as a JISA. So a junior ISA, a parent or guardian can open for a child and they can be opened up until their 16th birthday, but the money is kept in that ISA until they reach the age of 18. They can be held in either cash or stocks and shares, so you have the choice, um, but the limit to pay into these is a little bit different, so you can't pay £20,000 into a junior ISA, the limit on these is actually £9,000 per tax year. Emma, am I correct in saying that these replaced the um, children's trust funds? Yeah, so these replace the child trust fund. So if you've got a child trust fund, you could transfer it into a junior ISA if you wanted to, um, but you can't transfer from a junior ISA into a child trust fund because they're no longer available. Ah, that's great. Thanks for explaining that one. Any other questions, Becky? No, I don't have any more at the minute. Okay, then. So I'll answer a question that often comes up. Um, People often ask if you can have more than one ISA and... As financial advisors, we like to be difficult and like to give you a yes, you can, but it's not quite as straightforward as that. You can have more than one ISA, but you can only physically pay into one cash ISA and one stocks and shares ISA in any one tax year. So you can't be paying into two different cash ISAs in one year. You can only physically pay into one. But say you had one that you opened five years ago and you haven't paid into it for ages and you open another one and pay into that one, you can still physically have two cash ISAs as long as you're only physically putting money into one of them. That makes sense. Yeah, no, that's good. So why would you go for an ISA only over any other savings account? So the main difference between an ISA and any other savings account is basically the the tax benefits of it. So any interest that you earn in your ISA is going to be tax free. And if you were to have a stocks and shares ISA, um, on a normal investment, there may be capital gains tax and dividend tax. But on an ISA, you're not going to get either of those taxes because it is all completely tax free. Excellent. Sounds like a good bonus. Everybody loves um, a bit of a, a tax free investment, don't they? They certainly do. So how can any of our listeners who are interested set an ISA account up? So you can go to your bank or building society and you can probably open one online. Most of them offer that option now, but if not, um, there may be the option to open one in branch or over the phone. Um, and to find where you where to open an ISA, you can obviously look on comparison sites that are available. And if you are looking for a stocks and shares ISA, a financial advisor is a good place to start to point you in the right direction. It certainly is. So what happens if I set my ISA account up and... A year down the line, I decide I want the money out to go and buy a new car. Is that possible? 
as long as you as haven't long as used. I've got enough money in my ISA to buy the car. <laughs> I was going to say, what sort of car are you buying, Becky? Good point. So as long as you haven't used, obviously, the help to buy ISA or the lifetime ISA that I talked about where they have to be for purchasing a, a house or a um, for retirement, you can use your money in your ISA for anything you like. But you need to bear in mind what the access is on the, the ISAs. They all have different options. So it could be an instant access ISA where you can get your money out immediately and you can have it straight away. So you'll be able to go buy your car. Um, some ISAs have a notice period. And some of them might be a fixed term ISA. So if you want to take your money out, then there'd be a penalty to get it out. So before you put your money into an ISA, obviously look at the withdrawal terms to make sure that you're going to be able to do what you want to be able to do in future. Um, The other thing to remember is a stocks and shares ISA. It is intended for a medium to long term. So if you're putting money in this week and thinking you might be needing it out next week, obviously you can probably get it out. But it might not be the same value as you initially put in because the stocks and shares ISA will rise and fall in value over time. Very good point. So I've heard about this thing called a flexible ISA. You haven't mentioned that in your six different types. What's one of those? So a flexible ISA can be either cash or stocks and shares. Um, There aren't a huge amount of providers that offer them at the moment, but they, so they are quite a a unique thing still, but they're, they're a very good thing. And what that means is if Becky, say, needed to take her money out to buy a car, she can get that money out, but she can then pay that money back in in the same tax year. So normally, if you have an ISA, say you'd put £20,000 into your ISA and you took £1,000 out, normally it would mean, well, you've just lost £1,000 of that year's allowance because you've taken it out, you can't put it back in. But the flexible ISA allows you to replace that money in the same tax year so you can take full advantage of your allowances. Excellent. So I'm trying to think of an example here. With the, Going back to my car. Your car? I draw money from my ISA, mm-hmm. buy my car. Yes, you do. Then a few months down the line, I sell my old car. Mm-hmm. Ooh, could I then, good example I know, on my feet as well I thought you wanted a bonus there <laughs> could I then pay the money that I get from the sale of my old car back into my ISA if it was a flexible ISA you could as long as it was in the same tax year perfect gotcha <laughs> good good so is it possible well what happens to my ISA account if I died oh it's a very morbid Joyful question. question there, Becky. I know. I know. But it's one from buying a car to dying. Yeah. <laughs> one of those things that happens to all of us eventually, though. So what happens to your ISA is if you have a spouse, you can leave that ISA to your spouse using what we call the additional permitted subscription. Wow. There's another one you need to put your teeth in for. <laughs> what is that? An additional permitted subscription. That's the one. So it can be used um, for anyone that's died since the 3rd of December 2014. And what it means is your spouse inherits your ISA um, and they inherit your allowance, basically. So if, say, Becky, you died and you had £5,000 in an ISA, your husband's allowance for his ISA would increase by £5,000 because of your additional permitted subscription. I, well, I hope that me being alive would be more of a benefit to him than having my ISA allowance. But <laughs> hopefully we won't need to find out. I won't tell him how much you've got in your ISA if he asks, Becky. No. I'm not going to ask him the question either because I, I wouldn't like to think they'd say anything other than that. No, no, no comment. <laughs> so do we have any other questions about ISAs today? I can't think of any more questions. I think... W- We've covered yeah, pretty I've, much everything. I think we've kind of covered what an ISA is, what the different types are. That's pretty good. Who can have them? How much? Yeah. I that, think we've got it all. This is it. I'm really excited to hear when we start to talking about the funds and things like that, though, because that's when we get really get down to the exciting stuff. Not too much longer, and we will be bringing that to you soon. And with that, we've completed today's recipe. We hope you have enjoyed following along with us today and cooking yourself one recipe closer to a financially secure future. If you've enjoyed today's podcast, you can head over to www.recipeforfinancialsuccess.co.uk 
where you can find out more information and a full list of ingredients from today's recipe. For more hints, tips and tasters, find us on Facebook at Your Recipe for Financial Success. If you'd like to get more involved, share your own experiences and learn from a friendly community on a similar journey to you, why not join us in our new Facebook group, The Money Compass, where we will support you to navigate your way to financial success. Thank you for listening and see you next time.